John Mendez here with one of our how-tos. This is the basics of setting your radar up, how to get a picture that you can actually use at sea. We've been very kindly given a Raymarine Axiom display. This is one of those multifunction displays. It does charts, radars, depth. Today we're looking at the radar. If you'd seen our charts one, we showed you the basics of setting it in the right uh, measuring systems for nautical use. So we'll go past that part and we'll go to the radar itself. So on our home screen here, we just touch and immediately it gives us the option to transmit. So we'll press our transmit button and it will take a few moments to warm up. We warmed it earlier and it's giving us a picture. So the first thing you want to do when you look at the picture is study some of the detail and find out the information and where it's portrayed to you. We've got some soft overlay buttons shown here. We've got course over the ground, speed over the ground and depth shown as permanent displays. I agree with all of those. I'd probably have my position as well, but hey ho, he's got those. And then in much smaller detail, we've got how it's shown. So at the moment, the harbour is doing harbour transmissions. We're in head up mode and we're in relative motion. Well, what does that mean? Harbour mode means the radar sensitivity has been adjusted by the manufacturer's specification to give the best picture in a harbour. So it's decluttering the picture slightly. Head up means the heading line on the radar is lined up with the bow of the boat and it's showing a picture where anything on port side of the screen is on the port side of the boat. If we had a north up radar, this heading marker would be wherever on the screen that we were actually heading itself. So if we were traveling or heading 240, it would be down this way. So you need to actually know, are you in head up or north up mode? This radar can only give us head up because it's not aligned to any form of other compass. And then the relative motion, that means that objects are appearing to us, the motion of them is shown relative to us. So if we're stationary, and something's coming towards us at 10 knots, it will appear as though we're moving towards it at 10 knots. So relative to us, it's doing 10 knots. Over on the right hand side in the bottom, we also have the range of the screen. So it's saying one and a half miles. So that means from the center of the screen to the top edge is one and a half miles. And then the range rings a half a nautical mile. So each one of these, that's a half, that's a whole, and that's one and a half. So each range ring is half a mile apart. And that allows you to judge very quickly the distance of something. So when we've got the basic picture like that, when I turned it on, I'd left it in auto. And most autos of new modern style sets are pretty good. However, auto is only as good as they designed it when it was designed. So if it's a 10 year old set, you might find the auto can be beaten quite a lot. Uh, a good marine radio operator, radar operator, 20 years ago was much better at setting the picture up than you could as a fairly uh, casual user. Now the auto stuff is pretty good. But let me show you how we can adjust that picture so you understand what the information does. Somewhere on your radar, there will either be buttons individually for it or to be a soft set of keys. Here we've got soft keys. We have adjust sensitivity. So you might have separate buttons that say brilliance, gain, tuning and range. We have range buttons down the bottom here. They allowed us to zoom in or out. Every time you change range, the radar takes a couple of seconds to re-establish the picture because if you've changed the range, it's also changed the strength for the transmission. So therefore it will take a couple of seconds for the picture to rebuild. Some of the modern sets are really quick, but give it a chance. So when we press and we get adjust the sensitivity, we get gain, rain, sea cutter, and the bottom one just adjusts the color on this. And if we go into these, we'll start with the gain. So at the moment I had it on auto and it was choosing 63% of gain. What the gain does is adjusting the sensitivity of the set, how much of the picture is being transmitted onto the screen and how much detail for you to see. So when I touch on that, if we bring the gain down a little bit, you can see I can make the boating world much safer. We've lost lots of targets because we've lost sensitivity. So obviously that's too little gain for the picture that we've got. Let's take it back up around that 60% again. That's where their automatic had it. 
round about there. And if we go a little bit more gain, so enhancing the picture, you'll start to see those targets become a little bit harder and we start to fill in the gaps. I'm now at 80%. And if I keep going, you'll see that the picture will become full of noise to the point that we've obliterated the picture completely. And it's a little bit like the squelch on the VHF. You turn it down till you get noise and then you turn it up on this. On here, we do it the other way around. We turn it up till we got full noise and then we turn it down a bit till we get some clarity in the picture. So around about 80, those things are down here are a little bit hard. If I come down a little bit more, you'll start to see a little bit of a softening. And that auto at 63 was about right. If I come down a bit more, we start to lose things. So on this set, in these conditions, auto was pretty good. Rain clutter, that's the next one down of our choices. What does that do? Well, if it's raining, what it does is it takes the returns and tries to ignore the bit that's around you by eliminating the rain, because the rain will appear as a soft target, a bit like cotton wool on the screen. But again, you have to be careful. If you turn the rain clutter up, again, you can start to lose targets. We've softened the, the return so much that we're not getting a real image of what's out there. So unless it's raining, you can leave it off. Great setting, off. But if it is raining, you will need to put a little bit on to just soften that image, otherwise you'll get a very blurred picture. So we'll turn it off at the moment, nice sunny day. Sea clutter, that adjusts how close to the boat we're taking returns. By that I mean, if it was a rough day, the radar would be giving a very confused picture around the boat from all the waves being returned. And they'd be giving a soft image because water's quite soft, it doesn't give a hard return. So sea clutter allows you to adjust how close to the boat you're picking up things. And again, it softens the return and allows you to pick out hard objects within that clutter. But again, if you go too mad, you can quite quickly make it terribly safe by making real things disappear. So again, use with caution. Nowadays, on most sets of an auto, built within the last five years, I tend to say auto's pretty good. So on here, we also have a setting for all to auto. And to be honest, if we say yes and set it all back to auto, it's amazing how well it does it. But if you've got an older set, you really want to go through that range, tuning and gain. See what you can get and have a little play with it and see if you can improve on the picture. The issue with that is that every time you change range, you might need to replay with it. And that's where auto, if it's a good auto, is a massive benefit. So once you've played and had a good experiment and found the settings and adjusted the radar for your circumstances of where you are now and today, what you need to remember is radar is not like a plotter that once you've got it set up, you can kind of let it get on with it. Radar needs playing with and frequently. Even if you've got it all in auto, go out on some nice sunny days and play with acquiring targets, play with looking at the picture, Adjust those sensitivity in the gain to see if you can make the picture better or worse and understand what you're adjusting to make those changes. The other thing you really need to be able to work out is how does one use a VRM and an EBL? What are they? A VRM is a variable range marker. So at the moment I've got our radar set on half a mile total picture. So that's a half a mile and here's a quarter of a mile. So these are fixed range rings. A variable range ring is either adjusted by a swirl knob which spirals it out from the centre, or on more modern ones you touch the screen and it gives you the range of the object you've touched. So that's the range ring, it's just one that moves as opposed to one that's fixed. An EBL is an electronic bearing line, so that gives the bearing of the object that you want to know, just like doing a compass bearing for a risk of collision. And they're very effective, so if I just touch and hold on this one, we get a little menu, and now I can put the VRM and EBL, they're combined on this. And it says that we have 0.37 of a nautical mile to that object. And it's 61 degrees to port off my heading line. So when I look out the bow of the boat, it would be 61 degrees off to port. And that's really effective and very, very useful. Now, if we were doing a compass bearing for a risk of collision, we'd look down the bearing and see if the target continued to be on the same bearing. That would tell us there was a risk of collision. The radar makes it even simpler. Because the line is fixed on the screen, if the object we've highlighted just travels down that line, 
it will hit us. We need to do something about it. And remember, if it's real fog, there are no stand on and give way vessels. So in real fog, we're all give way vessels and we all have to take avoiding action. Nice sunny day, so that's not the case at the moment. But if this target continued down that line, it will hit us. But there's two clever little bits of information. If the target is dropping in front of the line, so it's coming down this side, that means we will go astern of the target. If the target is dropping below the line, it means we will go ahead of the target. But what you've got to remember is that most radars, the return given doesn't necessarily relate to the size of the vessel. Yes, really big boats look bigger blobs, but lots of boats can have target enhancers and appear much bigger than they are. But conversely, that means that something that doesn't give a great return might be huge. And I'm very uncomfortable being just ahead of the bow of something that I know very little about. So if you've got something just dropping below the line and you can't see it, I'd suggest some corrective action so you stay alive.